Hey, what's up guys, Turtlelags here, bringing you, bringing you another Lord of Dice Global video. Um, today I will be going over Masters, specifically how to upgrade a Master, the unlock requirements for each, um, the rankings based on the Japanese website, as well as my personal rankings of each Master. Um, I'll also share like uh, some advice with regards to how to upgrade the um, masters quickly. Um, also, I will go over uh, basically what sets each master apart from the other. So first things first, I just wanted to point out the Japanese tier list for all the masters. Um, Yuri is ranked top, Philip is next best, second best, Clara is uh, mid tier, and Arthur and Almeria are low tier. Now, personally, I actually do not agree with this ranking. Um, I think that Philip is the best because of its uh, of Philip's uh, limit break ability, um, which is uh, which I'll go over in a moment. So, well, let's go over the explanation for the Japanese website rationalization for this tier list. So Yuri is um, is a character that is unlocked on the 12th floor of Infinity Tower and um, you can purchase her with either 3.5 gold, 3.5 mil gold or 3,900 gems. Now um, I would highly highly recommend that you spend the gold instead of spend the gems just because gold is a lot more farmable than gems. Um, in a future video, I may go over um, how to quickly rack up gold, because gold is used in pretty much everything. All right, so um, let's see here. So Yuri has master skills that will reach the four masses ahead. Sorry, this is a Japanese translation, so I think what it's saying is that Yuri's master skill is what makes her better than the other masters. Uh, since the second scores from yours are spreading by one square at a time, if you use master skills with a mass before you touch the boss in a raid or descend dungeon, you can take a decision of six squares. Okay, so here, let me show you what it means by that. So... Okay, so this is what it means. So it's saying here, like, if you position yourself in front of a boss with one square gap in between you and the boss, and the reason why you have to have a, a gap between you and the giant boss is because if you step on this tile and the boss is right here, you will end up turn facing this way or that way, and your master skill is going to end up pointing this way or that way. So um, the Japanese explanation was saying you, if you have one, if you are uh, two tiles away from the raid boss or the big boss, and uh, you are facing the boss, you can deal one, two, three, four, five, six tiles worth of damage. So, um, so it's saying here that uh, Yuri is the best uh, of all the masters for that reason, or one of the reasons at least. So I'm going to scroll back up here. Um, so critical conditions, so just your ability to crit. So here's a table explaining the crit and counter ratios. So although Yuri is relaxed compared to other masters, in the case where the critical condition wins the battle with a difference of 7 or more, uh, the critical magnification is also increased to 140. Let's see. Okay, so actually a perfect example is comparing Yuri to Arthur. So Arthur and Yuri, they both crit for 140%, but as you can see, Yuri's um, crit requirement is more lenient than Arthur's. In order to crit with Arthur, you have to win by 8 or more in a dice battle against an opponent, whereas with Yuri, it's only 7 or higher. Um, and so uh, if you were to just focus on this right here, Yuri is actually more efficient than Arthur. Oh, and actually compared to Armeria, it's a 7 or higher, 7 or higher, but actually Armeria deals less damage um, 
less crit damage, although her counter damage is slightly higher too, so you have to take that into consideration as well. Um, yeah, alright, so moving on to Philip. So Philip, I personally think, is the best master of them all. Um, I'll explain in a moment, but anyways. So, in order to unlock Philip, you have to achieve rank 20, and you have to pay 950k gil in order to unlock him. Um, I actually made the mistake of spending 2,000 gems to unlock him, because I was... Um, back then I didn't know how to farm gold very well. Um, but I, I will release a video that teaches you how to form how to farm 950k gil relatively quickly so that you spend this cost not that cost okay so it's explaining here that philip has a master skill that deals widespread damage of 11 rear tiles um, like the bombing type you can damage extensively behind yourself so use it for firepower to the boss with raids and dealing with enemies left over by towers and others it is a master skill that is easy to use even on the third floor of the raid boss which is the highest degree of difficulty in the present situation so let's try using the person who is clearly stuck now, i don't know about this part but anyways i um if you look on youtube and you know search for videos of people clearing the third floor of the raid boss um you will f um there is this one really neat video where uh, these three people were so close to wiping against um, the third floor raid boss and the guy, the one guy who was playing Philip, the other two people were playing Clara, and the one guy playing Philip pulled out a last minute master skill that I think hit like seven to eight tiles, something nuts like that, um, and, and ended up securing the victory over the third floor raid boss. Um, once I max out uh, Clara, which should be pretty soon, I'm just one level away from max level, I'm going to start working on Philip, and I probably will main him uh, as my uh, default master of choice. Um, critical is easy to activate. That's another reason why Philip is considered um, second, second place in the master tier list. Philip has the easiest activation condition of critical compared with other masters, making it easier to activate. However, the critical damage magnification is as low as 120% as the activation condition is loose. So as you can see here, 6 or higher, so you only need to win 6 or higher to activate the crit by Philip, which is lower than anything any other master, which requires 7 or 8 or 9 in the case of Clara. Um, so it's saying that if you want to crit more often, but maybe with less damage, uh, so basically if you want to crit with more consistency, you want to go with Philip. Um, and his counter is actually the highest out of all of them too. And you only need to lose by, oh, so if lost by two or lower. Hmm. Oh, I see, okay. So that's maybe not as good, because if you lose by more than three, or three or more of them, the counter doesn't happen. Okay, so that's something to consider. Um, all right, Clara is next. Um, so they considered Clara to be mid-tier. She is acquired by clearing the eighth floor of Infinity Tower and um, uh, paying 950k gold. Uh, Clara has a master skill that deals damage to her surrounding area I guess. As damage can be applied to the surrounding masses, it can be handled as a whirlwind dicer of move zero in a pseudo manner. It is a master skill that makes it easier to handle fish. Oh, actually, real quick, um, let me show you what Philip's master skill looks like. Okay, so this is his master skill. The basic idea is you position yourself so your behind is facing the master, and um, so basically, like actually now that I think about it, Philip is the easiest, the master skill is the easiest to understand um, because typically when you set yourself for a bomber position, uh, how should I say this, uh, you position Philip in the same way that you would position a bomber. 
So if you're very comfortable with positioning yourself in bomber position, which is where you move such that your behind is right in front of the boss, then Philip is your go-to master. Um, and actually that's the reason why I plan to switch with him, just because even though I've used Clara for a long time, I still from time to time uh, have a hard time positioning myself correctly to get some of these tiles or some of these tiles to hit the boss. And actually from my personal experience, um, because Clara is considered a whirlwind type, against raid bosses I tend to not hit the boss for more than four tiles worth of damage. Um, that's just um, and that's with like optimal positioning. Uh, so Clara would be a good master to use for the master skill if you think that if you want to uh, just deal a decent amount of damage but not like op optimally like you could with either Philip or with um, or with Yuri. So uh, just to reiterate, Yuri, place yourself one tile away from the boss facing the boss to maximize damage. With Philip, you walk your back to the boss and then um, yeah, you're back to the boss. And with uh, Clara, who I'm about to talk about next, you want to position yourself basically hugging the boss like you would with Whirlwind, you know, for a Whirlwind position. Okay, so Clara, actually I feel like in Lord of Dice Global is the most popular uh, master used in the game. And I think it has less to do with the tier list than anything more so the artwork because you know, most most guys are going to want to look at Clara not the other masters but anyway so critical is hard to activate and I would vouch for that um, Clara the critical magn magnification is set higher than other masters because she deals 150 percent attack as opposed to you know 120 130 or 140 uh, however the conditions to activate the 150 percent is a lot stricter and i can vouch for that yeah you have to win by nine or more and that's you basically have to like totally obliterate the opponent in, the, in a dice battle because it is inconvenient if you challenge a stronger enemy than yourself it is inconvenient if you do not activate critical so it is not very suitable for um, high difficulty with frequent dice battles so i would agree with that um i feel like at this stage in my Lord of Dice you know, experience, I've reached a level where I'm facing against people with a lot better dicers than me, people who have poured a lot more finances into this game and have all the good dicers like you know, Kitsune or Nidhogg. Um, yeah, so it's just nowadays, even though I've improved much better in this game and I've optimized my team like to the breaking point um, with all the knowledge I've you know, acquired and you know researched and everything even with all that it's very hard for me to win dice battles by more than four or higher unless the opponent's just bad and so for that reason it's it's pretty tough to activate Clara's critical um, and so um, that's why I, I plan on kind of going away from Clara and eventually switching to Philip and however, as the critical con critical triggering conditions are severe, the counter is easy to activate. That is true. I end up countering a lot, but she doesn't counter for a whole lot, as you can see. Um, yeah, she has the lowest counter rate, and I feel like I'm probably countering two thirds of the time nowadays in PvP. Um, so, so yeah, I'm going to be switching to Philip. Alright, so now that I've gone over Clara, let's go over Arthur. Um, let me show you. Okay, so here's Arthur. Arthur, so skill that can range attack ahead. Arthur has master skills that can attack the seven squares in front. You can be active as a range attack officer, such as early stage raids and adventure dungeons. However, since the range is narrower than, I think, Yuri and Phillips. It is better to replace Yuri and Philip as soon as they release this train of level 5. Okay, this is basically saying that Arthur has better alternatives, such as Philip and Yuri. Okay, so um, 
you know, unless, you know, you're not trying to min-max everything and you just want to play the master that you like, then otherwise Arthur, you know, there's better choices over him. And if you um, go over to Almeria, which is next, Almeria has a master skill that, okay, so master skill is hard to target against enemies. Oh, actually, let me show you um, Arthur's master skill. So this is what it looks like. So it's near, so the description was saying it's narrower, and actually um, this is not optimal against a raid boss because um, in order to continue to face the enemy but be close to the enemy, you have to have one tile between you and the enemy. And because you have to have this gap, these other two tiles will tile at attacks won't reach the enemy either. So the maximum amount of tiles you can hit against a raid boss is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. Assuming you're facing the boss with one tile in between. And just to reiterate, the reason why you can never have these three hit a raid boss is because when you enter this tile right here, you will be following in the direction of the next tile, which will either be this way or that way. Alright, so now finally, Almeria. Almeria has a master skill that deals damage to the square of the cross type centering on herself, and it's referring to this right here. She attacks like a cross. Um, yeah, you can give yourself damage to enemies that are adjacent in the cross direction, but because the range is narrow, narrow, it is difficult to target the enemies with skill. Now, master skills are used as range attacks, so you should give priority to training other masters with range attacks. Okay, so um, it's the Japanese tier list is saying that you want to aim, you want to use masters that have have extensive reach. Um, so in her case, in uh, Almeria's case. Uh, she doesn't excel in any given direction. Actually, when I first started the game, I used her because it was really hard to hit anything with Arthur. Because during that, back when I first started the game, I didn't understand like which direction I would turn once I landed on another tile. Um, just I could never predict where I was going to face next. And for that reason, um, if you're starting the game for the first time, and uh, you know, in the beginning of the game, you only st you start off with Arthur and uh, Almeria autom automatically unlocked, if I'm not mistaken. I think most people are end up going with Almeria when they start the game, just because you know, she's a girl. But um, she's also very beginner friendly because regardless of where you're facing, chances are you're going to be able to hit the enemy with one of these four directions. Um, yeah, so uh, so there you have it um, with regards to the tier list. Uh, so once again, the tier list is saying the Japanese tier list is saying that Masters Yuri is the best, Phillips the second best, Clara's mid tier, Arthur and Almeria are low tier. My personal assessment would probably be Philip is top tier and Yuri's second tier, and then Clara, then Almeria, then Arthur from best to worst. Uh, but that's just my personal opinion um, based on what I've explained to you just now. So how? So I want to next go over upgrading the masters and you know, how to quickly upgrade and why, what's the incentive of, of upgrading? Because a lot of people don't understand how the master skill attack works. So uh, the way it works, so master skill is achieved when uh, you end up, let me see if I can find the icon. Okay, I can't find it, but uh, you notice how, like, when you start a dice, uh, when you start a match, like, you have a picture of your master on this section of the screen here, and there's, like, a red bar that goes up as you charge it up. Every time you play a dicer or step on this glowing pink triangle pyramid tile, then the, um, the master skill will increase, the gauge will increase. Once it hits max, then your master icon will start glowing and you can activate a master skill. Master skills are a great way to deal tons of damage multiplied 
multiple yeah multiplied damage against a raid boss or against an enemy um, particularly in pvp without moving and so um, as you can see here um, i almost have clara clara maxed and when i do max her out her master skill attack will be increased by 210 okay I anticipate my master skill attack will reach 300%, which means I deal three times the damage with my uh, my master skill, um, which is really good. So um, now, in order to upgrade your master skill, you either spend gems or you spend master shards plus metals or rainbow. I think these are called rainbow shards. Now. Of all these three resources to acquire, I would say the metals are the easiest, and in a future video I'll go over how to farm these, it's real easy. Um, and then uh, the second uh, rarest is this, the gems, but you're not going to spend the gems just because you need them to do the premium summons, so I would say the major bottleneck that you got to strive for are these rainbow shards. Now, currently in the game, in terms of renewable rainbow shards, there are only a select few. Um, one way to farm sh rainbow shards is by going to uh, metals here, spending 50 metals to purchase 5 rainbow shards, um, spending 50 raid coins to buy, I think, another, yeah, another 5 rainbow shards, and then spending 500k gold to buy another 50 rainbow shards but what i would advise is actually not spending the gold just because gold is so important and only so each day basically spending 50 metals here and 50 metals here for a total of 10 uh, rainbow shards a day so if you go to upgrade here as you can see um at, to achieve max level you need 200 rainbow shards, which means it would take you 20 days to acquire enough to go from level 14 to 15. Which begs the question, so, like, you know, if it takes that long to uh, acquire that many rainbow shards, like, what other sources are there? Um, well, at the present time, uh, Infinity Tower is the, the best way to acquire lots of rainbow shards. Like as you can see here, you know, when you clear a mission, or when you clear one of these here, uh, you can get up to four stars, and you know, uh, if you acquire enough, then you can get uh, rainbow shards. So as you can see here, it seems like every, every 20 stars you get, you get X amount of rainbow shards. So that's going to be enough rainbow shards to max out one master and bring the other four masters to roughly level four. Let me see. So my master's level, so you're, my Yuri is level seven. My Philip is level four. Armeria level six. Arthur level one. So uh, without spending any money whatsoever, uh, you could max out one master and probably get close to maxing out another assuming you totally ignored the other masters. Now if I was to go back in time and start over I'd actually focus on just two masters. The reason you want to focus on two masters and not just one is because there are certain situations like descent dungeons where um, the descent dungeon monster the like the the boss is immune to one of the two masters like you basically cannot play the master and actually as you get further into the game and start farming like these rooms which i'll go over in a later video um, you'll have enough rooms to fill out all five slots with plenty left over and then you can just pick and choose which master you want to hold which um which rooms uh, which actually uh, brings me to a, another point, which is uh, what sets the different masters apart from each other is the kind of rune that they can equip. So I'm uh, just going over briefly here. So Clara can hold um, so, 
these so two d6s two d10s and one of anything yuri can hold two d4s two d10s and one of anything in this slot you can activate by spending the thousand five hundred gems real cheap i would recommend unlock this is one very good thing to spend your gems on. If you're aiming for end game content, you're going to unlock this at some point. Now, what makes this slot so valuable is, you know, with three daily mi missions or so, you can easily ac accumulate 1,500 gems to unlock this, and you can put any of the three different kinds of rooms in here. Okay, so, and then um, Philip. D4, D6, D10, D10. Okay, the Philip is unique in that he has D4, D6, D10, D10, so he has an assortment of different dicer slots, or room slots. Armeria, D4, D6, D6, D10. Okay, I take that back. Um, so Armeria has that, and then Arthur, D4, D4, D6, D10. Okay, so depending on what rooms you end up picking up at the beginning of the game, that may actually partly influence which master you end up with. I think based on like the sequence of rooms that I acquired, I think I acquired these two first, which basically pigeonholed me with Clara. Because I think when I first started, yeah, when I first started, Yuri wasn't even available yet and I didn't have a single D4 room that was actually like three stars or better, so I ended up going with her. Okay, uh, let me think, am I missing anything? Am I missing anything? Uh, yeah, I think that covers everything. Um, I will post the link to this Japanese website in the description below. Uh, let me, I think in this guide it actually shows, yeah, it shows the rune slots, four sides, four sides, six sides, ten sides, and then the freedom for whichever you want. Um, at some point, uh, according to here, uh, Raven will be unlockable. Um, I'm going to avoid any spoilers here, but it, it, I guess this is kind of a semi-spoiler because, um, yeah, in the future there will be other masters that will be unlockable. Um, unfortunately I don't have any of Raven's stats in this Japanese tier list so I have no idea what he's capable of doing. Probably pretty powerful and is, he's a warrior kind of like kind of like Arthur here. But anyways I hope you found this video informative. Uh, this video was a lot more rambly. <laughs> oh my goodness 25 minutes. Okay but I hope you found this extremely informative. Uh, in my next video, uh, per the request of you know one of my viewers, um, I will be filming a video about how to excel in PvP, um, specifically arena. Okay, so if you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.